This is Lem with Revzilla. And I'm Spurge, and we're here to talk to you about how to put a tool roll together for your motorcycle. So most modern motorcycles don't even have the basic tools included with them to do simple tasks on the side of the road. So the point of this video is to break down some of the items you might want to consider bringing with you as you're building out your own toolkit. It's true, we get lots of questions from riders who are wondering what to put in their tool rolls. And because there's lots of different riding disciplines as well as lots of different motorcycles and even wildly varying skill levels, it's really hard for us to give out one size fits all answers. So what we're gonna do in this video is actually show you some of our own tools that we use when we're on the road and some of the things that we think about are gonna come up in discussion and hopefully they sort of spur you to think about some things as well. So keep in mind, there's more than one way to skin a cat and you can see even in the way that Lemmy and I pack our tools down, it's gonna be a completely different approach. I have one universal bag and I change out my tools depending on the bike that I'm on and the type of riding that I'm doing. Lem, on the other hand, clearly takes a much different approach. It's true. I actually have three main components and I'll switch them in and out for various things that I have laying around. The first component is usually a fuel bottle. I tend to be on either choppers with tiny, tiny tanks or on off-road and dirt machines, also with tiny, tiny tanks. So I have either a bottle of four-stroke fuel or two-stroke fuel that will come with me. The next component I usually have with me is what I'll call my universal pack. There's some stuff in here that I'm going to bring with me almost regardless of what kind of motorcycle I'm on. I've got things in here like a throttle meister, and then I've also got parky pucks, rock straps, things that I'm going to use when I'm just out there on the road, chapstick, tire tools, stuff that I'm going to use irrespective of motorcycle. Now the third component to my kit is the tool roll itself, and this is probably the bulk of what I'm going to be carrying. Today I brought with me the tool roll that I carry when I'm out on my old Harleys and choppers. However, I have other ones too. I have metric tool rolls, stuff for modern bikes, I also have some for dirt machines. I've got a tool roll for just about everything in my garage customized to the particular machine I'm going to be riding. Which makes it really important for you to know your bike. For example, I'm not riding old Harley, so I have no SAE tools with me. I'm primarily packing mostly metric tools, and these are going to help out myself and my bike, as well as my buddies. Folks that are primarily on Triumphs or BMWs or KTMs, they'll work across the board. So at this point in the video, what we're going to do is we're going to take our tool bags, we're going to open them up, and we're going to show you exactly what Lem and I are packing as far as tools are concerned. Spurgeon, show me your tools. So you're going to see a swath of tools spread out all over this table, but the number one fix you're probably going to run into on the side of the road is going to be tire repair. So having the right items with you to fix a flat tire is going to be paramount when you're on a motorcycle. Now, we've got some varying degrees of how we do this. I have my kit set up specifically for off-road bikes that are going to be using tubes, so I'm not going to have plug kits or anything with me like that. Instead, I'm going to carry a spare tube, and you're going to notice this is packed a little bit odd, a little bit differently than you might have seen. So what I do is I actually take a tube and I, and I pack it up in plastic with a little bit of anti-monkey butt powder. That acts as a lubricant, really easy to get the tube in on the side of the road, I'm on the trail, and then I wrap the entire thing in gaff tape. Now I do that so I don't have to run the risk of actually getting a pinch flat before I ever put this in the motorcycle, and it's just something I've learned through many, many errors along the side of the road. Now, Lem, I think you have a different approach for how you tackle this. Indeed I do. This is crazy. This thing takes up a bunch of room and not all of us have an adventure bike with 973 liter panniers. 74 liters, Lem. <laughs> Instead, what I do is I just carry patches. They're much, much smaller and they're usually fine for getting a tube back into service. Now note too, the other thing I've got as well are tire plugs. Now even though these are for tubeless type tires, I wind up riding some bikes that have tubeless type tires when I'm testing out motorcycles and I ride with a lot of people who are on modern bikes. And most modern bikes do have a tubeless setup. And I've found that a lot of the times the fastest way to get off the side of the road is to just fix my buddy's bike. Yeah. One time, I let him fix my bike one time, but I had the tools, and one of the tools that I had with me was an electric pump, and this actually fits perfectly underneath the back seat of my bike, and I can pull this out, plug it into the battery, and then I'm set to go, and it's usually gonna be faster than using something like, you know, 25 pounds of CO2 cartridges. <laughs> now again, this is an area where we differ. That thing's really cool, only a lot of my choppers and dirt bikes don't have the electrical system to support something like that, so that's not really that helpful to me. So instead, as Spurge noted, I use CO2 cartridges. These again, don't take up too much space. I have enough CO2 with me to fill up all sorts of tires, add in a small inflator head, and I'm pretty much set to rock and roll. Now the other tools I have for tires in my kit really are pretty simple. It's a pair of mismatched tire irons. I've had them for a long time. They work just fine. Spurge has something similar. So I've got a set of uh, spoons as well, but you'll notice that mine are a little bit more specific, and they've actually got special hexes on the back, which allow me to remove the axles, which takes us right into the next point. Before you can ever actually start working on your tire, you need the tools to 
be able to remove the wheel from the motorcycle. So there's a variety of different tools that you're gonna see on the table right now, and there's two different ways you can go to building these out. For example, you can go my route where I bought a prefab toolkit and then I supplemented in the extra tools that I knew I was gonna need, or you can go the old cheapskate McGee route over here, get a hodgepodge of crappy tools, throw them into a pile, and just, uh, I mean, duct tape them together, I guess. <laughs> you know, Spurge has a great point. Um, there is something to be said, though, for kind of piecing your toolkit together. So as Spurge mentioned, these are cheapo tools, but A, I have a lot less money in my toolkit than Spurge does, and B, I don't really feel so bad if I happen to leave one of these crappy wrenches behind on the side of the road when I'm performing a repair. Now the other reason I like to kind of piece my kits together is because I need a lot of tools that are just very vehicle specific. Let me show you a couple of them. First is this huge hex key. You're not going to find one of these at a hardware store on the road or at a Walmart somewhere, but that's used for checking the drum bolts that hold a drum to a Harley wheel. It's a really important piece of kit. Another one is this puppy right here. This is a little tiny T27 Torx driver. Now this is used on much, much newer Harleys, but I do ride with people who need help who are on newer Harley Davidsons. That's a really weird size and it's not found in most kits. So if you don't have one, you're kind of hosed because Harley uses them all over the newer bikes. Another important tool to have that's not gonna be included in any kit that I've seen from an OEM is gonna be this hollow axle tool. And there's a lot of bikes out there that utilize this to actually get the wheel off the motorcycle. If you're trying to fix a flat tire and you don't have this little guy with you, you're gonna be up the creek without a paddle. That's entirely true. Now, of course, too, there's some tools that you can just make that'll work really well for you. For instance, check out this spark plug socket I have. I welded this piece of scrap steel onto a cut down spark plug socket. This allows me to easily access the spark plugs on an older Harley that's still wearing its original Fat Bob tanks. That's not always possible with a standard tool kit. Note too, I also have this wrench here with the bottom cut off. Nope, it doesn't help the tool work any better, but it does help it fit easily into my tool roll. Regardless of whose pile you're looking at though, you'll notice one theme. Lem and I carry enough tools not just to fix our bike, but to also fix our buddies' bikes as well. So if you look at my toolkit, you'll notice that I've got the Torx heads for those of you out there on BMWs or KTMs. I can help anybody with roadside repairs with that. If you got a Triumph, I've got the hex heads, which because a lot of their bolts will use that. So really it's gonna be a variety of different tools that we have to fix a variety of different options. Now Spurge, let's not forget why we have all these tools, and that's specifically to hold parts onto our motorcycles. And we're both gonna have different parts with us. I mean, I'm riding adventure bikes off-road, and normally I'm crashing and breaking things, things like levers and controls, and having these in my bag set up is gonna make it really easy to make a trailside fix and get that bike out of the middle of nowhere. Now, I don't really carry those things. Well, in my dirt bike kit, I don't need them because my bikes are a little bit tougher than some of the more delicate adventure bikes that Spurge is flogging and beating on the reg. Crashing. Uh, and in my old Harley kit here, well, I don't really run over tree branches and baby head rocks, so I'm not really too concerned about snapping off levers and pedals and such. Instead, what I'm trying to do with my old Harleys is kind of keep them running and keep them on the road. So I have things to help prevent against mechanical breakdowns. Note that I have a set of spark plugs here. These fit flatheads, knuckleheads, panheads, so even if I don't need these, a buddy might get out of hock if I have a set in there. Another thing I carry, again, that's fairly universal among me and some of my riding buddies, are spare points and condenser for a Magneto. A lot of us run mag-fired bikes, and it can be helpful to have those parts sort of in somebody's tool roll if we're out for a ride. Now, one of the specifics that I am not gonna show you on the table right now, because this is my adventure kit, is gonna be a spare clutch cable. Now, when I'm out there on my T100, I always have a spare clutch cable with me, because if you blow a clutch cable in the middle of nowhere, having that spare with you is just cheap insurance to get you home. Now, that's gonna be some of the specific parts that you're gonna see on the table that Lem and I have, but there's also gonna be some generic stuff. For example, I see that Lem, you got some, some zip ties over there. I mean, these are just cheap plastic pieces that can get you out of a jam really quickly. I've got some bailing wire, I've got some electrical tape. This is all gonna be stuff that if you need to, you can fasten stuff down in an emergency to your bike. Man, when it gets down to using that stuff in the kit, it can be a little bit ugly. However, it can also be the stuff that gets you home. In addition to a handful of, say, somewhat generic and specific hardware, I might also encourage you to carry another piece in your tool roll that straddles that line between generic and specific, and that's fuses. Fuses can be the thing that make a minor electrical snafu a minor electrical snafu, rather than an item that makes you call a tow truck. Now, the reason I say these straddle the line between generic and specific is because I carry a wide variety of different amperages here. I'm not exactly sure what fuse might blow at any time, but they are kind of specific in that you do need to know what style of fuse your bike uses. So hopefully by this point in the video you're catching a theme, and that theme is the fact that you need to know your motorcycle, but then you also might want to carry a few extra parts for your buddy's bike as well. But really knowing what tools you're going to need to make that repair on the side of the road is going to be the real first step in being able to put your toolkit together. 
Now you should remember, your tool set is probably gonna grow as your skill set grows as well. The most important tool you have doesn't live in your tool roll, it lives between your ears. Now if you wanna educate yourself a little bit further on this, check out Common Shred where we've got an article covering a little bit more in depth some of the philosophies we have regarding our tool rolls. Remember too, we've got lots of other cool videos. Subscribe to us on YouTube so you can check out those videos as we roll them out. I'm Lem. And I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.